G'day there, this is Trump -a Monkey with my second ever Mandalorian reaction video to Chapter 10, The Passenger Fan Reaction Easter Egg Speculatory uh, video. That's what we're doing here. Um, wearing my Wookiee zip up hoodie and my Star Wars beanie, which I bought in Disneyland in LA. Hype. So this was an absolutely, for me anyway, I love all of these episodes. This was epic. I'm with some of, I say, the Star Wars fans out there. I think we all get a little upset that these episodes seem to end so quickly. And we want to see, like, main story arc uh, uh, news and things happen. However, I, I think there was more than meets the eye in this particular episode. So let's just jump straight into it. And um, not necessarily scene-by-scene scene breakdown, but definitely chronological order throughout the episode. Starting with the epic ambush which I really liked, and and these, uh, I don't know if they were like just thugs or bounty hunters, um, but they were definitely there under instruction, and they were speaking Huttese, and there was a little alien that people are speculating was maybe what a Jabba looks like without the hood, but actually we saw a, a very, well, an identical looking alien, not the same guy, um, harass, uh, uh, harass Ray in the, um, the Force Awakens, actually. She's kind of going to, to hand in her pots and get her food ration. So that was kind of interesting. But who sent them? That was my big question. Hit me up in the comment section as well. Who do you think sent those guys? Because they barely made it in time. Like, they were rushing against time. They knew exactly where Mando was going. Because that is like a very physical, narrow gap that they're trying to ambush him in. And it was like they just got there um, in time. I really, really uh, loved the... The entire scene but there was remember like this is why i said there's more than meets the eye in this episode in my humble opinion um first of all the snort was amazing but this is mando straight after the crate dragon look at his armor i love this picture because it's the snort baby yoda showing a bit of intelligence as well he recognizes how dumb that little alien was to run off with the jetpack but he's covered in the bile or the acid that's left over from the crate dragon so this is right after those events so was it Boba Fett? And there was a slow pan, and the little the little alien looks directly at the Boba Fett armor. And that's not the, for the first time in, in the actual uh, episode. The jetpack was hilarious. I thought that was, like, so brilliant. Um, loved it. The snort was incredible. I got another question for you, okay? Did Mando kill them? I know, right? I was kind of thinking, though, like, did he... Did he literally, because these dudes could just start following him. He's walking on foot, carrying stuff. Did he incapacitate them, tie them up? Did he ice them because he wasn't carrying their weapons? Right? It didn't look like it anyway. So, look, that was that was the first scene, and it was awesome, and I love that it was like a direct kind of continuation from the previous week. The next, then we go into the cantina. A couple of, a couple of notable things here. Um, I need to make sure I got the pronunciation just right. But, uh... There was an alien who's a Gagorin, and uh, I recognize him instantly from Rogue One. So there were all kinds of like aliens here. Of course, like Mark Hamill's voiced Jabba's palace uh, service droid. Um, but Moraf, an alien, a Gagorin who looks exactly like Moraf from Rogue One, uh, was was uh, seen right at the bar of the cantina when Mando walks in. Uh, and I love the Jawas fighting outside as well. It was it was like super atmospheric, man, and and even just the ships taking off in the distance. Um, well, out of out of Mos Eisley was awesome. Uh, obviously, a, a game of Sabak going on here with Dr. Mandible. And this is a shout out to the director of the episode who also directed the Ant-Man. You can go look that up. Um, but oh, there was just for a moment there. Look, Fett's armor. Look at this image. Fett's armor is, and Baby Yoda as well. Child, sorry. I'm going to call him Baby Yoda. Is like in frame a lot. There's even a weird pan to it for a moment. Like, like strangely. Um... Yeah, and a fool's array is a hand that she wins with, which is hilarious. Uh, and uh, that that's shown up in a, a couple of different places, including Solo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the kind of like the the like hoodlum orphanage, there's a kid who who can be heard to scream that. Now, by the way, a quick shout out. There's there's three shows I love to watch: uh, New Rock Stars, uh, Screen Crush, and Emergency Awesome. I watch all of their content when it comes to the Mandalorian. If I don't have an Easter egg of my own from being a massive Star Wars nerd, um, and I'll show you just how massive I am when we get to the spiders later on. Well, uh, I get it from those guys. So shout out to them. I love the content, and I'm contributing in my own fanboy way. Then we move on to the steak scene. I, I, I took this image here. I love it. Uh, and there's uh, there's a Treadwell droid, and, 
and really the um this, the keeper of of lost and wonderful star wars droids um this this scene made me like super hungry apparently a galaxy's edge shout out where they claim to roast a steak on a on um a, an engine uh and i gotta tell you there's a there's a blink and you miss it moment here where, <laughs> where baby yoda chases the eggs and we start to hear this this noise uh him trying to speak he chases the eggs up the ramp it's really really funny um and uh i yeah i gotta i gotta tell you i i thought that was like one of the best scenes ever um i wasn't sure was she making like a reference to like to greedo the rodian getting fried or just that rodians like burnt steak um but again the droids show up and i kind of dig it uh and then moving on to so we, we get off tatooine right um and and we're uh we're finally hit with the song that you're hearing now that i just have constantly looping um and this this is kind of this uh baby yoda i would say like the child theme song and this this is just like freaking cuteness overload with his face pressed up against the glass like this i i couldn't handle it man and and him kind of like i wasn't sure if the eggs were coming towards him or he was force pulling them but like there i feel like there's some like deeper kind of connection with these eggs here um, I've I read an article online uh, from one journalist who's mortified that he's eating somebody else's offspring. But like, you know, every time you have eggs for Brecky, you're doing that. And um, I got to tell you, I feel like there's something a little bit more uh, at play here. I, I Or not. What do you think? Hit me up in the comments section. Like, it, are the eggs, like, I even heard one theory that maybe the eggs are okay in his stomach. But I don't know. I feel like he's legit eating them. Um... Also in this scene, before he starts to eat them, he actually looks up at the cockpit. And I thought that was like another small moment of like, of Baby Yoda developing a sense of like, uh, morality, like right and wrong. So he knows what he's doing is a little bit cheeky. And I think that's important is his development. It was a big episode for his development. He's growing, he's eating the entire time. He knows what's right and wrong. He pulls a sad face later on when, you know, the eggs are explained to be the last of, of her line. Um, and he's also kind of speaking, but in gibberish. That's what the exact subtitle says, gibberish. So he, he knows uh, the difference between right and wrong. And towards the end of this kind of like space scene before we get to the X-Wings, Mando crawls in fetus style and sleeps in that little hole with Baby Yoda. And that's where Mando sleeps. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Like I honestly just thought he slept like uh, sitting up in the cockpit the entire time. So then we get the space cops. Now, um, intergalactic peacekeeping, New Republic space cops. And I thought this was like a deep cut throwback to a really awesome fan made movie that's been on the internet since the all early noughties, I want to say. Maybe even freaking 90s. Um, called Troops. And it's like literally supposed to be cops, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? But with, with sand troopers on Tatooine, if you've never seen that, then go and look that up because it's still hilarious it's definitely worth looking it up um now mando in this scene says like may the force be with you i don't know about you guys like the popcorn fell out of my mouth i was like because he was so mystified by baby yoda's force abilities and what is this sorcery in season one but then like maybe he doesn't necessarily understand what the force is per se and it is just a kind of greeting you know, and we say greetings all the time in, in many different cultures that none of us have, and sayings and expressions, none of us have any idea what they mean. So, like, maybe it's just, like, something that he understands needs to be said, which is kind of interesting. Um, but then, like, everybody who's ever seen Star Wars, and there were some throwbacks to literally Star Wars in New Hope here, lock, lock S-foils into attack position. The moment we see... The S foils open. We know that things are about to go sideways, um, and then that that leads to what I thought was like like such a well made and well shot. I went with a trench shot here, but there there were some amazing uh, uh, sequences. I guess the scenes in this chase sequence from the clouds as well, which I I just really really loved. And Mando like epically flying and crash landing. I loved the throwback again to A New Hope here. It is literally like the Death Star Trench. They have the 2D targeting system as well, which I, I just, I got to tell you, man, um, this whole scene was so well shot. I took a still here from when they're in the canyon, and I loved this, man. The, the editing here was just sublime. 
and um, the R2 unit and the flying. It was like, it was really, really badass. And Mando just doing like his, uh, his best gone in 60 seconds, Transporter, to name a couple of great chase movies, uh, car chase movies. I, I just really, really loved it, man. Um, and then, like post crash, right? We actually get into uh, the the slurp and burp. And I like I gotta tell you, like again, I don't have a problem with necessarily um, eating eggs. And and sorry to any of the the vegans who watch. Like half my family is vegan as well. But like I like I don't have a problem with this. I wasn't grossed out by Baby Yoda at all. Um, this was cuteness overload for me. The slurp and the burp, right? Um, there there is then like uh. There is a little scene with with his lunchbox, and he's so disappointed looking at this lunchbox. I was laughing my ass off, but then I was thinking like, again, this is all like Disney tie-ins. I'm expecting like Baby Yoda, the child lunchboxes for your kids at Galaxy's Edge in the future, and it totally reminded me. And I wasn't the only only person on YouTube to, to remember this. Um, like Yoda, like, mm, how you get so big eating food like this? I do not know. Like literally. <laughs> eating like luke's rations that's what i thought of here um and actually uh yeah i really thought that that baby yoda showed a little bit of original yoda's goof in this episode which i i kind of i kind of like like he's he's maturing a little bit he's acting a little bit goofy the tiny lunchbox was so cute um snuggling mando in the cold uh as well was really really cool and then we get like like woken up and Mando pulling his blaster as as we hear uh, IT crowd robot voice um, and a little bit of depth, not necessarily for the first time shown by Frog Lady, and she's like reprogrammed the assassin droid to actually kind of uh, uh, speak to Mando, explains why these eggs are important. Baby Yoda seems to like understand what's being said in basic as well. So he has a little bit of like, oh, like he's sad about like eating the eggs, but still can't help himself. Um, and uh, and she calls on Mando's honor. So like not only is she able to hotwire a droid, she's able to like, you know, call on Mandalorian lore. And I just thought that was like, that was seriously cool. Now, um, after this scene, we actually hear a lot of um, Baby Yoda making noises but it sounds like he's trying to talk. And uh, there was like one video I saw out there where, where people swear that he says like, like Dada, but I don't think he does. But one thing that I, I really, really heard a connection to, to the extent that I went and watched some YouTube videos of purely walk sound bites. I don't know why, but him like speaking in gibberish, trying to point out that Frog Lady has walked away and like, and really panicking sounded so much to me like like Ewoks and now I know the Ewok sounds were like mixed as well I went back and watched the baby Ewok a few different Ewok noises and I'm gonna I gotta tell you that's the vibe that I was getting um I don't know is that like necessarily 100% uh 100% uh, a an easter egg though so I'm not gonna say it, but I got I got the Ewok vibes um and I just yeah I gotta tell you I love this like small small IT crowd cameo I thought it was fantastic and um more than meets the eye with with frog lady though that and and obviously obviously then as we get into the next scenes um that is revealed now i i really really got winnie the pooh eating like honey cartoon winnie the pooh eating honey with his hands vibes from this particular shot. Obviously the, the Easter egg is is 100% face huggers from, uh, from, uh, from aliens. But I gotta tell you, I got, I got totally Winnie the Pooh vibes here where he just can't help himself and he's eating nonstop, which um, we just had a baby. And uh, he's obsessed with eating and pooping. And he's four days old, and I gotta tell you, that's what babies seem to do, and I, I get the feeling like he's uh, growing. Now we get like our, our kind of monster of the week and our bus fight, um, which is uh, the giant spider. Now that's actually taken uh, from Ralph McQuarrie's concept art, uh, and, and a spider that was meant to be on Dagobah. Now I have, I have original prints from the 80s of those. That's how much of a nerd I am. So I knew that one! I was like, I've seen this somewhere before. Had to go back and, and find it, but it was really, really sick. Um, and then the, the spider chase scene 
was um, just out of this world awesome. Uh, I gotta tell you, like Mando blasting spiders left, right, and center. I was just like, please give me a, please give me a Mandalorian video game right now. And um, and and using his gadgets, including explosives, to like just blast his way back to the ship. Uh, Frog Lady jumping as well. I was convinced convinced she was going to die and it was going to be up to Mando to take these eggs to the husband. I was convinced she was uh, just done for in this episode. But even more than meets the eye, she's able to outrun Mando, outrun these spiders. And by the way, she's played as the same by the same body actor as uh, Quill. I have spoken from season one. So that's an interesting one. Obviously, flamethrower usage. Um, Emergency Awesome always points out that... Uh, that the flamethrower makes an appearance in every episode and so far it's ringing true um but one thing i thought and i grabbed this image here mando for me and his weapons represented warmth and i just thought that like like cinematically that was really interesting uh against like the the cold cold just stock i, I would say like white whiteness of the spiders and this particular planet Everything Mando did from the Blastifier, look at it lighting up this particular image here. The Blastifier, the Flamethrower, everything about him, man, is is showing warmth. And and like I would say kind of like fatherhood. And even like even his armor, like it's covered in snow, but he's still fully malleable, fully, fully flexible. Like uh, everything about him is showing like warmth. Uh, and I really, really love that. And then um and then as we get onto like the ship, I loved this, this for me was the moment where I fell in love with this uh, frog lady. Don't tell my wife. Um, the, the tiny blaster. And Mando is like, bruh, you have a blaster? And, and Baby Yoda, uh, again, I like that he didn't just get bailed out by the force powers. He was really panicking. Uh, and she comes to save the day with some like bullseye accuracy as well. And I just, it just got me thinking about like, next episode and we've heard the synopsis where uh mando uh mando goes on the waves basically and gets some help from an unexpected person that's the synopsis so not a spoiler but like i get the feeling like she can handle herself and actually in her speech she says she's fought too hard and literally that's got me uh thinking like maybe they did actually fight like she may very well be like part of the uh you know resistance in public so I loved it, but then, uh, as I try to take off, obviously, giant spider boss fight comes, but the New Republic pilots come to the rescue, and uh, what's really cool is obviously Dave Filoni, duh, but the other one, Paul, Paul Sun Hung Lee, is actually a massive Star Wars fan, and I saw, I've seen some pictures of him surfacing on the internet since this episode, him in cos cosplay as a mud trooper solo was like so cool so this is a massive star wars fan which i really really love um and i love as well that new public pilots have great aim and and they're they, they're just making it look easy as they pop off these tiny spiders and being like it's brilliant completely made me think of the scout troopers as well it's just just rebels have great aim and then they let mando off because of his prior good deeds and that that totally tied into like a mandalorian um, and, and his like honor system, uh, which was mentioned by Frog Lady a little bit earlier. So uh, there were lots of there were lots of early focuses on Boba Fett. Then um, the spiders are similar to some that we saw in Rebels, and we're expecting Sabine to come up in the the next episode. And I would just say this: uh, like it went too quick. All these episodes do, and you totally want more. But there were a lot of like hints, and we know that um, Trusk is the the planet that we're going to, not Mont Calamar, um, and not Camino. So we know where we're going next, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a Bonza episode. I can't wait. But then, uh, of course, it ends with a final slurp. Look at the little guy. Dude, I got to tell you, it, for me, it worked, man. It didn't gross me out at all. It didn't creep me out. It creeped some people out. I thought it was hilarious. One final slurp and uh probably a burp as well but off camera um i really really like the episode uh i hope you're enjoying these mando videos guys i am i am genuinely like loving making them chapter 10 went by too quickly i'm like i'm with everybody who feels like it went by too quickly 
Um, but hey, only three more sleeps, and we get chapter 11, and I think it's going to be absolutely epic. Uh, I'm expecting Monster of the Week to be some Jaws-type creature. Let me know, who do you think sent those bandits at the beginning? Uh, did I look too much into Boba Fett? Uh, is Frog Lady gonna end up being like a, a true badass? She's got like some Sarah Connor vibes, some Terminator vibes about her already, some Ridley vibes. Um, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching, mates, and enjoy episode three of season two, chapter 11, coming up. Thanks for watching.